Hey everybody, this is DJ Jerry, and I got something right out of the vault for you today. That's right, Aerosmith Rarities. We know Aerosmith is one of the most popular American bands of all time. They've sold 150 million records. And Aerosmith started out in 1970. Um, they were also known as the Bad Boys from Boston. They actually used to live together with founding members Stephen Victor Telerico, otherwise known as Steven Tyler, and Joseph Anthony Pereira, guitar hero Joe Perry. They didn't have their first album, which was this one right here, until 1973. And they're a great band to hear live because they almost sound better live than they do in the studio. Lots of charisma there and they're still going strong. All right, we're gonna get underway with some uh, rarities, that's right. Uh, I thought we would start out with uh, some photos. And uh, these are autograph photos, of course. This is Steve Tyler. And this is authenticated by PSA, that's right. So it's the real deal. Uh, here's another Steven Tyler PSA. And one more. You can see the resemblance that he has of his daughter, Liv Tyler. Now, PSA is a third-party authentication service, and they are otherwise known as museum quality. We are going to talk a little bit about some of their albums right now. And I think the first place to go is this one. This was the first album I ever bought from Aerosmith back in 1979. And this is called Aerosmith Live Bootleg, double record. And you can even see there's some ring marks from uh, some beverages that were left on this album. Actually, it is not really a bootleg. It's an official release. Not that rare, but it was a great idea. I mean, it was done the haphazard way that unofficial recordings were made. They even left out one of the songs. Um, truly one of the great live albums of all time. And you can really get a feel for how excellent Aerosmith is as a touring band. All right, well, let's get into the the rare stuff, okay. So we are talking about Aerosmith being great live. Well, this one is one of their early sets. This is Aerosmith live from the mall. And there is Bad Boys from Boston. And it was recorded around 1974. Great sound quality and awesome music. Uh, here's another one from the mid 70s. This is called Access to excess, right? The Toxic Twins, Steven Tyler and Joe Perry were known for their excess in their consuming of alcoholic beverages and illegal substances. But thank God they cleaned up their act. All right, let's take a look at some more albums. This is uh, Boston Club 1980. Wow, great unauthorized this is from uh, um, Aerosmith. It's from a radio broadcast. So the quality is pretty good. Here's another unlicensed recording. Uh, Aerosmith Live. I believe this one was probably made in either the late 80s or early 90s. And let's take a look at a couple more albums. I don't know if you've ever seen this one around anywhere. That's called Aerosmith Riding the Wind. And it was recorded in 93. Take a look at the, the album here. These are not from the official catalog of Aerosmith albums, so they have independent record labels. Uh, this is Aerosmith Fever. That's right. Recorded live from Massachusetts. You can see their emblem here the Aerosmith wings. And let's pull out a few more of these great live albums. This one's uh, Virginia Connection, Aerosmith. 
live in Hampton, Virginia, 1987. This is another radio broadcast, so it's a good soundboard recording. And let's take a look at a couple more of these. This is uh, Aerosmith live from Osaka, Japan. That's right. Here is the, uh, the label here. And it's a double CD. It was recorded on December 31st, 1999, right on the eve of the new millennium. Really rare, you don't see this one around too much. Great quality recording. If anybody knows where I can get a copy of Aerosmith Live at Home Depot, because back in 2010, when Steven Tyler was going through rehab again, he fell off the wagon and he grabbed the microphone that the uh, sales assistants at Home Depot use to make you know price checks and announcements, and he started singing two Aerosmith songs. That's right, Dude Looks Like a Lady, and I Don't Want to Miss a Thing. This was reported by TMZ that he took out a... Uh, helium tank and started singing chipmunks version of it uh, he did sign autographs and later on in a nearby city in palm springs somebody got booed off stage in a little little one of those karaoke bars and uh, he was singing an aerosmith song and then lo and behold steven tyler comes up and sings i don't want to miss a thing wow wouldn't you have loved to have uh, been in the audience of that? How many times do you get to see Steven Tyler save a bad karaoke performance? Uh, this is Aerosmith live at the Hard Rock Hotel. They've done some residencies in Las Vegas. They're currently at the Planet Hollywood. This is what we call a dual disc. It's got a CD on one side and a DVD on the other has a lot of extra videos so it has the whole album some bonus cuts and DVD uh, an Aerosmith album that came out one of their more recent ones uh, music from another dimension that's right and it comes with uh, the CD with bon three bonus tracks it has the the videos live concert performances and interviews so this was uh, in limited release really cool uh here is the essential aerosmith it probably looks like something you've seen as a general release but it has a, a bonus disc right here these songs are not available on other discs and it may have been available from target or one of those stores that offered extra performances here we go here's another kind of hard to find aerosmith greatest hits album with some live bonus versions um, this one is i believe an official release but it was put in limited release it's called aerosmith made in america uh, this one is called aerosmith rocks domington and it's two cds it captures the entire performance and it has a dvd of the performance as well Excellent recording. Um, getting into DVDs, this one is an unauthorized release. I just found a comp for it for about $200. I don't know if that's overpriced or not, but it is an unofficial release. It was made in Holland, and it's uh, from the Aerosmith Permanent Vacation Tour. I haven't opened it up because it drops in value greatly when you open these uh, items, but they were saying that it might not even be from the permanent vacation tour. So, yeah, who knows? I'm gonna have to do a little bit more research on it, but this one is a DVD of Aerosmith Live in Concert. It does have a song list on the back cover. Now, you've probably seen this before. This is called You Gotta Move. It's Aerosmith Live. I believe it was originally uh, played on A and E, and then they released it on DVD with some extra out uh, extra footage. It even has like a uh, a bonus CD of extra songs on it. 
Well, I was shopping in one of my favorite places to buy rare rock and roll. This is the Gallery of Rock in Brazil. And I saw this one. And unfortunately, um, I bought it. It's kind of cool. It's an Aerosmith live concert. But it is. if you look at the set list, it is pretty much the same as this. So, and it doesn't have all the bonuses and things like that. So, you got to be careful sometimes when you're buying imports. They're hard to uh, notice if this is truly a different album. And I didn't have Wi-Fi or anything, so I couldn't check the list. But, you know, if you see something like that, try to see if you can hunt them down. Because a lot of times, they're just different covers, but the same content. And sometimes they're not even recorded as well. This is from MTV's... Unplug series. This is Aerosmith Unplugged and more. It's a two DVD set featuring Jimmy Page of Led Zeppelin. So if you were a Led Zeppelin and Aerosmith fan, this is definitely the holy grail. After this album came out, it's called Aerosmith Night in the Rut. Joe Perry left and slowly many members of the band started leaving. Uh, including Brad Whitford. I got a chance to meet Joe Perry. It was so cool. Uh, this was over at a Barnes and Nobles and he signed this book. He was one of the nicest celebrities I've ever met. I've met quite a few celebrities. Joe Perry looks like a tough guy, you know, guitar hero, but he was so nice. He would sign anything. He would stay as long as he could to make his fans happy. I think he signed anything except guitars because those things go for a lot of money. Here's his uh, autograph right here. And this was his biography. He also signed uh, a box set called Pandora's Box. It has a lot of unreleased and rare Aerosmith recordings and also greatest hits material. And it was nice to have Joe Perry uh, sign this one. And he also signed their very first album. Really cool. Um, and over here, this is his Joe Perry project. He signed this one too. This is a greatest hits album. Um, we mentioned that Brad Whitford, this is the other guitarist. He also left the group during the early 1980s. And he joined up with Derek St. Holmes, who this gentleman over here sang with Ted Nugent. This album is not impossible, but it's difficult to find. And it, I believe there's some rare versions of it on CD as well. Really good album. And uh, last but not least, I'm gonna show you one of the strangest shaped singles I've ever seen. This one is Aerosmith Jaded. Look at the shape of this thing, you know, and here's the back of it. And it plays, it's a picture disc single. All right, well, I wanna thank all of you for watching. And remember to keep on rocking. Bye now.